Thank you, Kevin, for that warm introduction. Uh, good afternoon, uh, good morning, or good evening, wherever you're watching from. Uh, my colleagues, Lisa, Matt, and I are thrilled to be with you today to discuss our experiences and how web-based applications have helped us uh, sustain our lean and daily work system. Uh, our agenda for this session is to discuss the lean program that organizational excellence promotes around the University of Michigan. Uh, how we transfer, uh, transferred our lean and daily work system uh, that was in person with physical elements into a digital and virtual world. Uh, we'll highlight how web-based applications have helped us sustain the model and how using these applications can help teams like yours uh, stay engaged and innovate in a remote setting. Uh, so a little bit about lean at the University of Michigan. Uh, the lean program started back in 2016. Uh, the program's goal at the time was to create 15,000 problem solvers across campus, primarily focusing on targeting staff. Uh, with such a large university community and limited resources, how could we make an impact? Uh, at the time, only our leader, Krista Schulte, was tasked to fulfill this mission. Uh, so again, with limited resources, it would be difficult for her, and even now, uh, with our small group to accomplish this goal if we only focused on leading special projects. So there was a need for a mechanism to help staff uh, manage and measure their work uh, and work towards solving problems that was affecting themselves and uh, their customers without our team focusing on those big projects. Uh, a daily management system called Lean Daily Work was born and started to be implemented around campus units. Uh, the system was utilized between or because we believe each team understands their own problems best and has the incentive and capability to fix those problems, but they just need help learning the process to do it. Since its inception in 2016, uh, Lean and Daily Work has been implemented in 49 teams across seven schools, colleges, and units throughout the university. But <clears throat> it all started at the university's Shared Services Center. Uh, the goal of the Shared Services Center, or SSC, is to relieve administrative burden from campus units so that they can focus on more value-added activities that support the university. And we were able to track how we are doing this uh, with our innovation index that captures SSC time savings, customer savings, etc. Uh, the SSC serves as a model area, or, or served as a model area, uh, where the system was piloted with all of its 26 different teams uh, including finance, HR, uh, and teams that supported those groups. Uh, this will be the setting of our story, how these shared services teams took the physical lean and daily work system and sustained it in a virtual setting. Uh, but before we dive into that, uh, we want to understand a little bit more about your teams. So, Lisa. Thanks, Colin. Um, so we want to know, how is your team working? I think um, we're, see we're hearing different things across, so we're going to pop a quick poll up. Uh, are you fully remote for the time being or extended? Are you in a hybrid flexible environment or are you working fully on site? All right, I'll watch that right now. Thanks, Colin. Looks good. Do you want to end it or do I? Let's see. Like there we go. Here we go. I got it. There we go. <laughs> so hybrid flexible, most of us, and then fully remote, um, which is also the Shared Services Center. Um, what we're doing at the Shared Services Center, we are have moved to a fully remote preferred environment um, for the foreseeable future. So um, good to have you here. Let's talk a little bit about what this looks like for our teams. Next slide, Colin. Thanks. So it's great to be here. Thank you for joining us. And um, you know, those results of the poll really help demonstrate what I think we're all dealing with right now. It's the new reality of how do we deliver consistent, effective training, coaching, and services for teams that are all in different types of environments. Um, to set the stage for the story today, like Colin said, we're gonna talk more about lean and daily work specific to shared services teams 
but um, I want to give you a little bit more background on, on what we teach as far as lean and daily work encompasses to give you a good idea of what teams are working with. Um, this is the mechanism that we use to teach teams kind of everything we know about lean and how it can improve their daily experience for themselves and their customers. And we really strive to teach, um, to help instill problem solving cultures throughout the university. The system itself incorporates five pillars. Each of these are important to the system. Um, at the top, metrics. So every team defines metrics to put a visual representation of the type of work they do. The Shared Services Center has quite a few transactional teams, but we also use this for teams that are like ours, project-based. Um, and we also encourage teams in all different types of work to have metrics to provide context about the work they're doing. These, um, these metrics help them answer questions like, how are we doing towards our goals? Where are the gaps in between where we are now and where we want to be with the services we're providing? The visual board is all about transparency. Um, this is so that all information can be easily seen by leadership and team members. The team huddles. Um, this is a stand-up that we um, have a daily stand-up as part of a shared communication strategy. It helps provide engagement and visibility opportunities for all the team members and gives them time to surface issues, opportunities, and questions. The fourth component is our everyday lean idea. And this is actually the way that we teach teams to walk through problem solving. Um, it incorporates measurements of current state and future state so that we can actually document the improvements and understand if the changes and experiments that these teams are trying are actually having impact towards their goals. Finally, leadership walks. This is where teams connect with their lean leaders um, through consistently scheduled you know, get-togethers. Um, it provides access to the leaders and helps the leaders understand the workload and challenges that teams are facing. It also ensures that there's strategic alignment towards shared goals between the team members and the leadership of the organization. So the two pieces that were really most impacted, obviously, by this move to a remote or hybrid environment include the visual board um, and the team huddles. So we're going to spend most of our time talking about the visual board and how it's evolving in our remote preferred environment. Next. Thank you. So the um, this is an actual like what the visual board looked like as it was. It was a large whiteboard that lived in the physical space of the team. Um, and the board had intentional spaces for components that are important to having a lean mindset. So at the top of the board, there was space for metrics and a space for shared, um, for shared work that would be visual. Colin, you wanna hit next for me? Thank you. Down at the bottom, there's a space for standard work for the huddles, um, a space for communications, recognitions, acknowledgements for the team. And then I think one of the most important components, we had a place where people could put the sticky notes um, from their desk when they ran into a problem or when they had a question or a hurdle that popped up for them, immediately documenting it and putting it up on the board so that it could be discussed with the team um, at the next huddle make sure that we don't forget these little things that are hard. And those are often the really good wins for improvement efforts. Um, we also had a spot for team temperature, and this is used differently by every team, but it is an indication of how a team is doing towards meeting its workload. And finally, the bottom of the board also was around the improvement efforts with the Eli, um, that everyday lean idea. And it would physically move across the board depending on where they were in the problem solving process. Um, so it was a good visual way to see how teams were doing in, in their problem solving efforts. Um, again, this visual board lived with the space with the teams and um, it was easily accessible and visual for leaders and teams. So what did this look like? You know, really, this is more of a feeling than it was um, how it actually looked. When you came to the Shared Services Center, there were 26 different teams spread across four floors. Each one had their own board with their own information on it. Um, they had metrics and charts, data related to their service level agreements for those transactional teams, um, ideas and notes about the changes and innovations that they were working on, what the team was working, shared accomplishments, 
celebrations, notes about potlucks. That was a really important piece. Um, this was a staple of the daily work lives of the staff that were in the building. It was a connection point and most importantly, created an understanding of the work that needed to be done so that we could ensure that we were meeting the needs of our customers. But as we know, what was is no longer what is, especially when we're talking about shared physical spaces and the way things were had to change. One thing Colin has is a really good memory. So he's gonna share a moment in time. <laughs> yes, uh, so there we were. Uh, I had just been uh, sitting or settling into my day, um, got my cup of coffee, went back to my cubicle um, and Lisa who sits right next to me, um, was leaning in and asked me a question. Do you think they're gonna close the university, Colin? Ohio State just did. Uh, so at this point, uh, there had only been two reported cases in Michigan. Uh, travel bans had already begun. Uh, so I replied back to Lisa, uh, what? No, we'll, we'll be fine. Um, but secretly, uh, I was thinking, Ohio State, I'm not surprised that they closed. Typical. Um, but also what I was thinking is, wait, so if we close campus for a short period of time, that means I wouldn't have to commute. Um, so how, uh, how things were different back then. Uh, the next day, the president of the university stated that we'd be encouraged to work from home if we were able to. Uh, throughout the upcoming days and weeks, we transitioned uh, out of our cubicles and stayed in our pajamas uh, for the unknown long haul that awaited us. Um, so uh, with that, I am. Uh, this is just our perspective, and I want to uh, get Matt in here and ask him, uh, Matt, what was your experience like at this time? Uh, right before we went remote. I'm glad you asked. Uh, I was actually in my first uh, few weeks at the university, uh, making a huge career change uh, from 20, 21 years in hospitality. Uh, we were thrust into that remote environment and I was thinking, how was I gonna learn all the team members' names that I'm supposed to supervise now that they're all at home? So it was a very uneasy time for me, but we, we, we survived and, uh, and I, I think we are, we're better for it now. All right. Um, so it was an ever-changing situation, uh, but there's one constant that remained. Uh, these SSC teams uh, would not stop huddling. Uh, that was a mandate from our senior leadership team. Huddles would look and feel very different, but uh, like all huddles or stand-ups, it's important to communicate how the business and operations are running uh, during any situation, especially during a crisis, crisis like this. Uh, coincidentally, we had just uh, started to experiment with remote work agreements. Uh, so some staff were familiar with working remotely uh, and using some of the uh, video conferencing technology. But it's safe to say that for some, Zoom was still a setting to help you see small font on your laptop. Uh, so what our group knew was that we needed to support teams the best that we could. I continue to coach them as though uh, we thought that this would only last for a couple of days. Uh, days turned into weeks, and we knew that we had to not only keep lead and daily work going, but we had to make it easy for teams to operate in a virtual setting indefinitely. So how do we do that? Uh, for Lisa, myself, and our team, we were tasked to uh, get creative with existing tools that were already in place. Uh, to help support the system uh, and find new applications to use at no cost to the university. Uh, when possible, we ended up being able to create templates for our teams uh, and customers to use. Uh, this was a rapidly changing environment, but the SSC's commitments to its customers didn't change. Transactional work did not stop. We continued to have to pay the bills. Uh, and now uh, you'll hear about one of those transactional teams. Uh, at the SSC. So Matt is going to share about his accounts payable group uh, and how they were able to transition leaning daily work to a virtual environment for them. Hello. Uh, I did want to talk a little bit about our, our experience from a transactional team. Um, give you a quick introduction of the AP here at the SSC and what we did on the onset of our transition to remote work. So the accounts payable uh, Purchase order team is comprised of 10 auditors and two seniors that process roughly 25,000 monthly invoices within a three-day service level agreement. 
Our work is 95% transactional in nature. Communication on this workload and assignments is vital to the success of this team. We rely on daily huddles and the visualization of data every day to accomplish our goals. During the onset of the pandemic, we were thrust into a rapidly changing environment. Our team went from working in a building to 100% remote work in a matter of a week. Uh, we were faced with some quick questions that we needed to answer. How do we effectively communicate as a team to ensure that our work is carried out in a timely manner? And how do we continue to focus on production in this remote setting? So there was a lot of stress and general uneasy feeling among my team. Any pause in working our cues could back up this team and potentially lead to broken service level agreements. For this team, the pandemic did not change the fact that the invoices needed to be paid. Our invoices just had a new theme. So in addition to the university, AP supports Michigan Medicine. Our hospitals were scrambling to purchase medical supplies, PPE, ventilators to support the expected unexpected crisis. Even though we were remote, the invoices poured in. We needed a quick win to stabilize and display our data to ease any concern on my team. We felt it wasn't the right time to roll out a new software program, so we looked at the existing tools we had, and we utilized Google Sheets. The reason why we decided to use Google Sheets, we identified a couple benefits. The first one is quick deployment. The AP team was familiar with Google Suites, and we could access and begin to use it immediately. It was easily accessible. We were able to create and utilize existing team drives for the huddle board. By using our current drives, permissions and logins were automatic, and we didn't have to wait for access. It was functional. Edits are easy, they're saved automatically, and they can occur in real time. We all had access to the same data at the same time. It was customizable. We learned that as time passed, our ability to add graphics, pictures, links, charts were endless. And finally, the collaboration aspect. We could easily add new teams, leaders, and contributors without any additional passwords or usernames. So in the beginning, we created a simple spreadsheet with numeric statistics. This accomplished the goal of a quick, quick rollout and the visualization of data, but it did not inspire, engage, or motivate as the physical board did. So I really challenged the team to mimic the feel of our physical board and to add creative elements to improve our daily work. So the evolution of how this kind of took place, we were able to create a visual virtual huddle board that exceeded our expectations. Here you'll see a little bit of our workload. We were able to document our daily work, goals, numbers of staff working, reaching tickets to ensure that our work continued. We made it, we made it easy to read, easy to edit, and we added calculations into cells that did not exist on our physical board. As far as production, we were able to expand our daily production goals and to, to include monthly calendars with new team goals in a creative, engaging way. We challenged the team to strive for success. We added pictures to denote when they hit stretch goals instead of just the simple yes or no. This creative addition from Sheets allowed us to provide the data in a fun way. We were able to add satisfaction metrics. We added charts on our survey results to connect our work with the greater service purpose. Being able to add shout outs of positivity helped keep morale up during this time. Additionally, Google Sheets allowed our team to archive historical data on additional tabs. With our physical board, sometimes that resulted in us taking pictures. Uh, so that new environment now, we were able to document that data seamlessly. We were able to document our, our ELIs, our everyday lean ideas. We were able to mimic the physical board with digital post-its to move through the process. The work of continuous improvement did not stop in a remote setting. And finally, engagement. We were able to add elements to promote our culture in a remote setting. Some examples are shown here are positive affirmation calendars, inspirational quotes, various approaches to happier self. So sometimes these rotating elements were created as add-ons to our physical board. And at times it was hard to find wall space. So with the virtual board, we have unlimited space to highlight different elements without the fear of running out of the wall space or really diminishing the importance of, of what we were trying to, to convey by the location that it felt on the wall. 
So here's a zoom out view of our huddle board uh, inside Google Sheets. And obviously you can see that there's a lot composed in there. This probably would not fit on the physical wall. But this digital huddle board became a central hub for communication, for our lean and daily work, and for our team engagement. We were easily able to share this with senior leaders and provide a snapshot of all things that this team was involved in while we were promoting our pursuit for excellence. And I will shoot it over to Lisa to talk about her team's experience. Thanks, Matt. So as a coach, um, I generally support the campus teams, but I also get to work sometimes with shared services teams. And, and I just love seeing how all the different teams are using um, the components in a way that really works for them. Um, Matt's team has done a great job with Sheets. And um, every team has really been able to accomplish getting the information that they need in a way that works for them. Um, we did not limit teams to a particular software, like Matt said, they wanted to use something that was accessible and easy and didn't require anything different. Um, we've recognized through this process through the last 18 months that teams with lean and daily work can be successful as long as they're incorporating all the pillars that we talked about earlier. As you saw with Matt's teams board, and I want to point out, he said something really great um, that I want to highlight is that Matt said he challenged his team to come up with ways to make it more engaging. And that's a real key component to lean and daily work is that the board doesn't belong to the supervisor. The board doesn't belong to the leader. Um, the board is really about what the team needs and, and they contribute and participate in that, um, in creating that board. So I just wanted to, to point that out too. Um, so as we saw on Massboard, they have metrics that help their team. They have clearly defined goals so they can see quite quickly and easily if they're meeting those goals. Um, they have a virtual board and that's a, that's a component. So the visual board actually having something that the team is using that contains those essential pieces, metrics, team temperature, standard work, um, having their ELIs visible and a place for idea generation. Um, huddles, they, they're huddling daily and that's happening. Their ELIs, you can see that they're moving. Um, the Shared Services Center has a, has a standard of one, at least one everyday lean idea completion per quarter per team. And so um, they're able to make sure that they're meeting that goal as well. And then leadership walks, Matt didn't mention, but I know they're happening. Um, our senior leadership has easy access to look at any team board at any time now that they're virtual. Um, which instead of walking around the building, so they do still have that access. Um, so success, when we define success for teams with lean and daily work, we're saying, are these components helping you? Are they in place? Then you're successful. Doesn't have to look the same for everybody. I'm gonna spend a, a few minutes now talking about our team and how we're utilizing um, a virtual board as well. Um, so Miro, I've heard people talk a lot about Miro at this conference, so I think everyone's available or um, has seen it or worked with it. If you haven't, big plug for checking it out. When we were transitioning to the virtual board initially, um, it met the first criteria for us, which was it was free. And so we definitely, we experimented with a few different types of software for, for our board, but we found Miro to be a really easy to use, intuitive whiteboard software. Um, and we were able to, to actually keep our board very familiar. We actually just overlaid a picture of the board that I showed you earlier. I'm gonna give you an example here in a minute. Um, and we're able just to work with it as we were used to the board. So it looks the same. Um, it's really collaborative, easily customizable. And um, if you go to the next slide for me, Colin, it's got fun things to it. And our team, we're really about positive business practices at the Shared Services Center. We like to have fun. We use Bitmojis. We love sticky notes. Like the heart of every lean practitioner is a sticky note. So Miro has all these components and templates so that we can use it for facilitation with customers and process mapping and all those things that I think most of you are already aware of. So I won't spend much time on that, but I will show you um, on the next slide. This is that same conversation that Colin remembers so well. This is the picture of our board that day. Before I left, I took a picture of the top and the bottom, the metrics and the, and the components on the bottom of the board. And now it looks like this. So in Miro, this is the top of the board for us. So this is where our metrics live. And this is where our collaborative kind of project work lives. So um, 
great things about Miro is for our metrics, we link just directly out to the sheets that update those linked metrics in there for us. Um, we have the ability to put notes on each other's uh, metrics or ask questions. Along the bottom, we all, each team member does different project work. And so we have a quick, easy visual of how people's projects are going and just a little bit of information. Uh, this week, we put a little box for nuggets that we're bringing from the conference. So the things that we want to make sure to go back and share or those sessions that were, you know, everybody needs to go watch this one, which I think is most of them at this point. Um, we're keeping that there. So the next time we get back to huddling next week, we can start to, to pull that apart and make sure that we don't lose that. Um, we highlight important dates for our team on this side of the board as well. And then our bottom of the board, um, the bottom part, we maintain those important pieces that we talked about. We've got our standard work and huddle schedules. We put communication pieces here. We still do sticky notes. So those things that get in our way or opportunities we hear about, we put those up on the board to talk about. We track our team temperature, um, which again is an indication just of how the team is doing towards getting their work done. Uh, and then um, our Eli's actually live in a separate system. We use monday.com for that. So we just have a link here to where our Eli's live. And let's see. So like Matt's team, we're not limited to wall space. So you'll see there in the middle, that's where we have our actual board that I just showed you. But all around it are all sorts of different collaborative things that we've done over time, some archive information. Like Matt said, it's easier than keeping pictures of our physical board. Um, so there's been a lot of benefits, a lot of unexpected, and I think you've probably found this as well in your work, these unexpected like perks to the shift that we've made. Um, it's become even more robust and better, I think, that virtual that visual board than it was before. And we're we're still learning and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. For now, I'm gonna turn it back over to Colin. All right. Thanks, Lisa. So uh, in addition, <coughs> excuse me, to Miro and Google Sheets uh, that Lisa and Mac talked about, uh, there are several other applications. Uh, that teams are using uh, to support the work that they do. Uh, as Lisa just touched on, uh, monday.com. Uh, for those of you who don't know, monday.com is a project management application. Uh, so for our purposes at the Shared Services Center, uh, it helps us keep track of our projects and innovations around the SSC. Uh, we built in a template uh, for the Everyday Lean Idea form that can be housed right in monday.com. So that element of the Lean Daily Work System uh, is already embedded in monday.com for use. Uh, <clears throat> also, Google Docs. Um, also, uh, we created an electronic Eli form uh, in Google Docs to help staff innovate and eliminate uh, administrative burden for their team and their customers. Uh, this was a paper form before, but now it can be accessed and shared with others at any time. And finally, uh, Google Sheets. <clears throat> Some benefits of Google Sheets. Um, or, or sorry, Google Slides, um, the same benefits of uh, that Matt shared with Google Sheets uh, for huddle boards, <clears throat> very collaborative and editable for anyone. Uh, keep standard work very simple. <clears throat> so clicking the next slide to discuss the next topic, uh, whether it's metrics, announcements, or updates on projects is very easy. It's also easy to get creative and create your own team flair, as you can see in, in some of these slides. Uh, there are others like Trello and SharePoint, that uh, some campus units are using, uh, but the beauty is that not one, uh, it's not a one size fits all. Uh, teams can get creative and make whatever system work for them. But now uh, we're curious how your teams are staying tied to the work. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Lisa. So we're gonna, um, we're gonna use Padlet. Colin's gonna drop a quick um, link in the chat for you. And if you would click on that, um, I'll just walk through Padlet for a minute here if you're not familiar with it. So you can click on that link and that will take you to this page, this website. Um, and we wanna know what software or cool kind of things you've figured out how to use or what to use. Um, this is a place for us to share, right? So um, any types of software or other things that you're using for any of these particular areas. So we've got a column for communication, time management, which I'm really interested in learning more about, engagement, um, process mapping, or other tools, or then anything else that you've found that you just really like um, that you could share. 
it's easy. Somebody's already figured it out. You just click the plus sign. Um, I think, yep. And then type in the subject line of what it is that you're using. It'll publish in real time here. We'll give it just a minute while it populates. And if there's anything that you see that someone else has typed and you want to like give it a little heart, little upvote, you can do that as well if it's something else that you like. I'm getting a lot of notifications from up here. There we go. <laughs> so let's just give it a minute um, if you can add a couple more for us. And this Padlet will be available so you can come back to it if you want to remember it or screenshot it. Um, Yeah, Miro's getting a lot of love. Um, like I said, feel free to come back to this link or take a screenshot of what you see here. Um, it will be up. And Padlet itself, um, if you're not familiar, another free tool to have a few boards. And we use this for gathering feedback and, and different things in our training. So it's been a really helpful, a, a really helpful tool as well. All right. Um, so how is this method actually working? Uh, for the SSC, um, who I, I talked about, needs to show that we're actually relieving administrative burden uh, for ourselves and for our customers. Um, we've had some pretty shocking results since uh, remote work uh, preferred uh, was our standard way of going uh, about our work. Um, we've had over 248 innovations come through our innovation index and uh, I, I won't go into the Innovation Index, but you can watch our session that we had uh, previously at this conference, uh, our Innovation Index, Measure What Matters, um, to find out a little bit more about the Innovation Index. Um, also, uh, our average number of ELIs has increased per quarter over the last 18 months. Um, so teams are really able to thrive uh, in the remote environment. Uh, and uh, we've also saved almost uh, 40,000 hours of time for our staff and customers. Uh, in fact, uh, this past quarter, we had the largest total number of savings since the pandemic started and we went remote. Uh, so like I said, teams are still able to thrive and innovate uh, while being uh, at home. Uh, also uh, with Lean, we pr pride ourselves in letting staff have a voice and feel respected uh, with the Lean and Daily Work system. Um, this is shown by our overall employee engagement score of 83%, uh, which is well above the national average in the United States. Uh, and elements uh, of that overall score are actually even better among staff closest to the work. Uh, so what have we learned? Um, first, uh, you don't need to recreate the wheel to help keep staff engaged around the work. Uh, whether it's Miro, Google Workplace, Trello, uh, web-based applications can definitely support collaboration and innovation. Uh, whether there are, uh, while there are many options and uh, our teams are free to be creative with the tools, uh, not every application uh, will work with every team. Um, so we need to feel free to adapt and change uh, how we're working uh, if they're not getting the results uh, or the level of engagement that they want. Uh, every team has their own set of norms, culture, uh, and you really have to meet people where they're at. We've learned that uh, we have to be intentional about how and when we communicate with each other. Uh, since we cannot lean over and talk to the person in the cube next to us, uh, the huddle might be the only interaction with others for the entire day. Uh, so it's important to have that time to connect, not only around the work, uh, but to connect with each other. Uh, and by using these applications, we've shown that it's possible to keep people engaged with the work with less effort. Uh, accessing metrics, ELIs, uh, and being connected to the work is just one click away uh, and can be accessed anytime someone needs it. So we've, we've touched on the benefits that we're recognizing with remote work. And um, Colin, I'd like to ask you a little bit about as a coach, for these teams at the Shared Services Center, what's a benefit that you've seen with this remote working that we're in now? Um, so initially I was really pleased uh, to see that uh, most of the team's culture stayed intact. Um, so if, team, if a team was very fun and, and lighthearted, uh, they stayed that way in their remote environment. Um, uh, those who weren't as connected to the system as they could have been, uh, this virtual uh, environment, uh, this remote work, 
uh, gave them a chance to kind of reset uh, and start anew. So, uh, you know, don't let a, a crisis go to waste kind of thing. Um, but really, this was a, a chance for, for teams to embrace a new way of working uh, and kind of, like I said, start anew. Uh, but for me as a coach, uh, it's easier for me to see who's engaged with the board, the Eli's or, or metrics um, without having to physically go to the board um, or take pictures like Matt was saying um, or take notes for my record. Right now it's all online and just one click away. Um, so for me, I'm also curious from Matt's perspective, um, are there any other benefits that uh, you think Matt, Matt uh, your team has experienced uh, while being virtual rather than in person. Yeah, thanks for asking. Um, one of the interesting uh, dynamics that I think has taken place is, uh, like Lisa said, that the board is really for the team, created by the team. Uh, so anytime myself or any of the other supervisors or senior leadership would get up and kind of walk to the physical board, uh, you would see all the eyes kind of perk up there and, and on the um, workspace floor to think like, what is he looking at? Uh, what's the next task? You know, and now being in a remote setting, we can access that data and I can really like study some of the things that they're working on without this um, fear of uh, the, the, the eyes of what I'm about to do. So um, it, it definitely has uh, made things easier to kind of share that data. Um, it was very apparent in the physical world when we would all huddle kind of around the board. Uh, everybody would look at us. So that's uh, one perk that we saw. I think that's so interesting, Matt, because, you know, we talk about the how great it is to have things in a visual way and have it really easily accessible from our lean perspective. But I think uh, we don't always think about how it feels when you feel like you have that ownership of the work. Um, and, you know, you want you kind of see people going to look at it and you wonder, like, like you said, what are they looking for? Um, and I think too, one thing that's been really great about this new environment is it's really easy for teams to kind of cross pollinate on their huddles. So it's much easier for somebody to pop into a huddle and observe. There's um, our uh, one of our largest colleges that has a big contingency also of teams utilizing lean and daily work has really intentionally started to like go to each other's huddles so that they can really learn from each other. And I think that that's been a really helpful way. Um, just the ease of, of connecting, although it's more intentional. Um, I spend a lot less time looking for parking or taking the bus to get to campus to visit with people. We save a lot of time to just having people not coming to a central location for training. So um, there's a couple other things that I've noticed as far as benefits and and the creativity that's coming from remote work. So what's next? Um, at the, you know, for our university and, and for all around the world, we're in a process of learning, like reflecting on what have we seen happen with the teams now that everyone is really settled in um, and we've got teams back on campus in hybrid ways. We're looking at how can we reimagine um, our training de and development for lean and daily work teams. So as we move forward in a virtual world, what does that look like? And then what are the best practices to make sure that all of our teams feel supported in that virtual or hybrid environment? How are teams able to communicate effectively when they're not fully remote or not fully in person? So we've also established um, a community of practice since the pandemic started called Empowering Blue, and we're facilitating opportunities that way for colleagues from across the university and health system to come together, um, just like we're able to do at this conference. And, and that's been really awesome to see as well. So um, from a campus perspective, what's next is we're just continuing to learn and putting that into effect for teams um, in how we teach and coach them going forward with this program. Uh, Matt, how about your team? What's new? What's next? So our next major initiative uh, is uh, to have agility throughout the teams. So can someone from my team uh, learn traits, learn job responsibilities, learn, learn everything that there is on another team? And can we flex those, those employees in between teams based on demand? So we're looking to uh, kind of quantify who is out there on other teams um, make sure that they're, you know, providing um, 
the proper support to any teams that are in the, the, the red or in the heavy state. Um, so we're going to use our huddle board to kind of track um, where our teams are, where our team members on specifically on AP are out inside the uh, SSC world. And um, hopefully uh, we can have so much agility that no team will ever be stressed with the workload. We can sh kind of shift our, our, our staff around. So it's very exciting. Awesome. With that, I think we are at the end of what we came to tell you today, but we're certainly happy um, to answer any questions or address anything that we could cover a little bit more in depth for you before we go.